Once again, Lynn is in danger. I think she knows it too. I sincerely doubt she'll be coming back to this apartment tonight. She and I are connected to each other somehow. She's my only lead, and I can't lose her. I have to get to her and fast. Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd the Show where I talk about open games and today we're going to be playing Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and saved Camilla from Certain Doom as well as Missile, the little dog down there. And in this episode, we're going to go ahead and see if we can try to find a way to escape this apartment because the phone has been destroyed, it was dropped in a fish tank, and now we don't really have a way out of here. With the telephone in this apartment being out of service, my only hope for escape is to find another telephone. No Mr. Desk Lamp here. The only friend I have to talk to is that nice little doggy curled up there on the floor. So he basically said what I said, but with less words. Oh, hello, what's up? I was wondering if you could help me. I'll certainly try. About the only thing I'm really good at, though, is barking. There really isn't much else. I think he might be right there. But I'm really, really good at barking. Miss Lynn comes chasing after me with a broom, the lady next door kicks the wall. I've got quite a bit of influence around these parts. Ah, uh, you certainly do. Speaking of barking... I'll knock this wall down! I can't do a female British accent. I'll knock this wall down. If you keep that racket up, I'll bring this old dilapidated building down on you. Maybe I'll do that. I, I imagined her with more of like a British, like posh sort of accent, but I can't really do like a, like a woman, like a, I can't really do like a British woman's voice. Did you hear what I just heard? You mean the lady next door's angry howl? No, forget that. It was the sound of a telephone ringing, coming from the apartment next door. Oh, I get it. You're thinking about borrowing our telephone, aren't you? But how, how are you going to do that without breaking the wall down? Well, the lady next door is kindly offering to do it for us. Yes, but she's mostly hoping to crush me underneath it. Well, we could always, you know, try our best. I don't know, maybe the wall will miss. <laughs> I'll pound this wall open! I told you, didn't I? I told you I'd knock the wall down on you. So this is what it feels like to have the wall knocked down on you, huh? More like she knocked you out through the wall, really. I'm still alive, aren't I? You are. But the TV and the star ornament aren't. Mm, I'll never bark again, not as long as I live. But wait a minute. Looks like all that commotion wasn't for naught. Huh? Your barking made her create a path for me. It did? But the wall is still standing, just like before. But there are paths only the dead can see. Oh, those kind of paths. Indeed, our abilities to ghost trick can transport us through walls, so thankfully we can go ahead and make our way to the next room over. So you're leaving, huh? I guess so. You're going to save Miss L Camilla and Miss Lynn? I have to follow my own mystery first and foremost. That means everything to me. But you will save them, right? If it helps me along the way, then yes. I don't have any powers of the dead. I'm not even dead, actually. But I'm going to find a way to help Miss Camilla, too. We create our own paths, right, Missile? That's right. Okay, I'm leaving now. Guess this is our second goodbye. It is, isn't it? My name is Sissel. If we ever meet again, that's what you can call me. Sissel, huh? Got it. You know what, Sissel? I'm going to create my own path, just like you said. <laughs> I 
And there he goes. There's like someone, a fan of this game, like recreated that uh, animation in like HD. I'll link it in the description. Tonight is that holiest of all nights. My deadline. All I need to get some inspiration from the muses is this bottle and some cheese. Here is to the boorish people next door. New info has been added. Are you all right, my darling angel? Have you taken your medicine like a good girl? Well, here I am in yet another strange room. What's with the oddly tense air of this place anyway? Now where's that little treasure I'm looking for? Ah, there it is. The telephone. Now if I can just borrow it. Even now, Lin's life is in danger. I have to use that phone, and fast. I can't very well make that woman bring it to me. I guess I'll have to find a way over there myself. I promise this is the last time I'll compare this game to Ace Attorney, but just like Ace Attorney, this game has an incredible soundtrack. So we want to go ahead and right over here there's this rat. We want to go ahead and free him. He may not seem important, but he will be in just a second. Oh, Mr. Prime Minister, you mustn't. I'm a married woman. And I'm a married man, but we cannot resist this any longer. I'm ready to abdicate it all for you, even if it means my ultimate ruination. Hmm. Ruination. Is that even a word? And that abdicate just doesn't look right somehow. This is going to nag at me until I'm sure. So she's going to come over here looking for a dictionary, and so what we want to go ahead and do is we want to scare her with this rat. I'm not going to use her text bubble right there because I think there's a chance that she might uh, find the dictionary down there and then walk back over to her desk. So I'm going to use this windmill. And then we're going to go ahead and attach the dictionary. And something that we're probably going to do a lot in this game is we're going to attach to things and have people grab them and bring them over to other places. But it's strange. I know I left this dictionary on the shelf. It's as if some little angel were playing naughty tricks on me. Perhaps, my darling angel? Mama? Alrighty, so now we're just gonna go ahead and wait here. What is it, my darling angel? Ow, my head hurts, Mama. You poor dear, and no wonder with a fever of 102. Here is to a night of fever hotter than the love of my, p than the love of my prime minister. It's almost time to go out for the l for my lesson. Can I take the night off? Yes, I suppose that would be best. But wait a minute. I bet you're happy to have an excuse to get out of it, aren't you? Not especially. If I ever don't want to go, I just don't go and pretend I did. I go play com with Camilla next door or something. Here is to the blunt honesty of my darling angel. Hey, today is Papa's birthday. Oh, it is? Aren't we going to celebrate together? Let's not talk about your father, dear. Now Mama has to go back to work. I have a deadline tonight, after all. Mama, wait! I just have one thing to say. Don't try and put me in the middle of you two, okay? Whatever could you be talking about? I know what's going on, you know. 
You write novels and Papa wants you to stop. But it was very selfish of you to take me and leave the house. I want to go home. Now, now, it's time for good little girls to go to sleep. Especially sick little girls. I hate you, Mama. New info has been added. These two are quite a pair. Father would have to be a pretty strong man to hold his own against them. It sounds like their family circumstances are pretty complicated. I wonder if I had a family. This is like a more casual sort of spot in the game. Eek, what is going on? Oh, I made a typo. Now, just like we did with the dictionary, we want to go ahead and catch a ride on this wad of paper. Once it lands on the trash can, we can fling it up into the air, which gives us the perfect opportunity to go ahead and attach to the phone right on over here. Hello, is that you? How many times are you going to make me tell you? Tonight is that holiest of all nights, my deadline. Please, I'm begging you, change your mind and come home to me. I think you're the one who needs to change his mind. Please, put yourself in my position. You can write your novel just as well from home. Until you change your mind, your daughter and I won't be coming home. Even if that means forever. Let me talk to Amelia, then. At least. You can't talk to her. She's sick with a fever right now, and I won't have you giving her nightmares. I want to talk to Papa. No, I don't want to hear your voice anymore tonight. Please, wait a minute. Don't try to call again. I won't answer. I refuse to answer. You got a new phone number. Now I finally have the telephone lines I need. I'm curious about this woman's husband, but I should go find my only lead first. That hitman who's after Lynn is sure to be heading to the junkyard right now. I'd better hurry. And hurry we shall. Uh, right over here, first one on the list. Not much time has passed since I was here last, but the situation has changed. Looks like they're examining my body, but who are they? And beside them, a certain somebody else wriggles and bounces happily. I wonder who that person really is, too. Welcome back! You weren't gone very long. What's going on here? The police are here to start the criminal investigation. You know, into your murder. My murder case, eh? Where is Lynn? Is she alright? So you found out her name already, did you? I'm impressed. Sounds like she was in some kind of immediate danger. Not to mention the fact that a hitman is after her again. Well, you don't have to worry about that kind of thing. She was just taken into custody a few minutes ago. Custody? You mean she was arrested? But why? You don't... I don't know. I'm just a desk lamp. Hmm. I'd better see what I can find out. Quite a thing, huh, this case? Yeah, one of our own. A murderer? He will roll over this. And she's a rookie, too. I heard she was carrying out some crazy investigation. Rookies aren't given crazy assignments like that. Not even rookies like Lynn. Yeah, but I heard she was special. She got strong ties to Inspector Cavanella of the Special Investigation Unit. 
Hmph. I plan on moving up the ladder on my own merits myself. Yet, yeah, well, we detectives shouldn't be standing around gossiping. Never know who might be listening. Like me. Like me. Hmm, he's saying something, but I can't hear him from here. Yeah, I believe Ray said something earlier about how if you're too far away, you can't really hear anything someone else is saying. I think we could safely assume the cause of death was the bullet he took to the chest. Bring the stretcher. I'll look into the rest back at the lab. Would you mind waiting here for a bit, Doctor? Inspector Cabanella, head over to the Special Investigation Unit is on his way now. Special Investigation Unit? What What do they want with a case like this? I don't know, but Cabanella is our top investigator. We don't want to get him all bent out of shape over, or there'll be hell to pay. Don't see what that has to do with me. I don't really get what Cabanella wants to come for either. It's probably just a big lag for him, but it makes things tougher on us. Hey, watch what you see behind your back. You never know who might be listening. Like me. Like me. <laughs> oh god, what voice am I gonna give you? Ah, the tension of a crime scene. Yeah, nothing like it, baby. Evening, boys. How's it looking? Inspector Cabanella, thank you for coming. Allow me to report, sir. Fine, fine, you just hold that thought. I'm gonna make a little phone call first. So this is the head of special invest of the special investigation unit. He seems uh unique. New info has been added. This is Inspector Cavanella. He is absolutely hilarious, and I love him. Deal be the deal. How's it going over there, baby? Uh, what voice do I give to you? Going? How is it going, you ask? You'd like to know how it's going. I would say it's going well enough. About fair to average, if I had to say. Yes, it's going all right. Not the man I was hoping to, have, to talk to there, baby. Do me a favor and put that other nice man on the horn now, would you? That's a nice fellow. If it has anything to do with this park, I'm the one to talk to. I'm the guardian of this park. Yes. Uh, sorry about that, Inspector. I just got here. Well, glad to hear you made it. That other fellow just about threw me for a loop. Started blabbering about s about being the guardian of the park or some such. Yes, him. Uh, sorry about that. Well, start doing your staking out thing, baby. And buzz me if anybody anything comes up. Yes, sir. He says baby in every single sentence. The park. That's a place I don't think we'll visit for a while. Now then, sir, if I may make my report, sir. Doc! Yoo-hoo! Oh, Doc! Talking to me? I need you to handle this case with your finest care and attention. Would you do that for me, Doc? Don't need you to tell me how to do my job. Anywho, I'd just like to see the suspect now, if I may. Lynn, sir, I asked her to let herself be taken into custody voluntarily, sir. She's being detained in the Junkyard Superintendent's office right now, not in Teston's. Superintendent's office, eh? Super! And where's that? Just be on where you park your bicycle, Inspector. I'll go interview that suspect then. Yeah, nothing like it, baby. 
Carry on, boys. Good luck, sir. <sighs> yeah, he's great. Oh, that Inspector Cabanella. He sure has a strange air about him. You can say that again. I've never seen anybody use stairs the way he does. I hear he's dancing his way up to the stairs of promotion the same airy way. And I hear Lin is his personal favorite. What's the deal between those two? Hey, how should I know? I think we can pretty safely assume this was the murder weapon. Oh no, that pistol! Yep, same model as the pistols you detectives carry around. You don't think it's Lens, do you? This is not good. If it is cursed, it's all over. So Lynn is a detective, and the murder weapon might be her pistol. What could it all mean? So, completely disregarding any gun safety or anything like that, we just... So this is the weapon that took my life. A pistol, eh? My memory seems to be hazy on pistols. But I have seen them before, that's for sure. Let's see, this part right here is... Fools, if you want to fire that thing, aim it in your own direction. I didn't fire it. I'm the victim here. This is the act of somebody who's jealous of my abilities as a detective. Well, what are you glaring at me for? I'm hardly jealous of you. Well, guess that proves it's a real gun. What was that? Is that what I think it was? The sound of a gun. I've got a bad feeling about this. Every time that phone rings, it's bad news. It's like that old riddle. Which came first, the ring of the phone or the crime case? Um, if you say so. Trick time! Ah, there you are! Do me a favor and have the doc come to the super's office, would you? Uh, she seems pretty busy just for a moment, sir. Which one are you, the green one or the blue one? Huh? Oh, uh, I'm the green one, sir. Listen, Greenie, get the good doc over here this instant, or I'll see to it that you never wear a green suit again. Y yes, sir, I'll send him right up, sir. Trace complete. Please, sucker, go to the superintendent's office immediately. Ugh, <sighs> if I must. What's going on? Don't ask me. Something seems really, really wrong. That shot sounded like it was coming from somewhere around the maintenance building. Yet another gunshot rings out in the lonely junkyard on the edge of town. The sound gives me the feeling a new death will be waiting on the other side of the line. Apparently, I'm not the only one the Reaper's interested in tonight. But as long as there's anything I can do about it, I don't plan on letting anybody die. <laughs>